microdose, yeah, microdose, 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 dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here, coming to you with the newest edition of the Microdose, episode 102. Still, still in the Kush Hayes quarantine COVID club. Who knows how these things work? But we're we we feel fine. In fact, worst case scenario, our our lower left back hurts for some reason after doing a load of laundry. So I don't know what that means, except for the fact that we're getting old. Joining us tonight. We got a great guest, our favorite guest. He's been on the show more than a handful of times now. He is the CEO of Angel Cake Entertainment, and he's rebranded his group podcast, Box Office Party. You can find them every Wednesday on Spotify and most of the major streaming sites. Please welcome the funniest man in the room, everybody. Drew Angelman. Drew, what's good? Happy New Year. How you doing, dude? Happy New Year. I'm doing pretty well. Um, I, it's, I've only had like slight panic attacks so far in January, uh, two weeks <laughs> in January. But uh, I, I think this year is going a little bit better. <laughs> At least it's starting out a little bit better than the last couple. But uh, oh. so far, I'm having a good time and I'm happy to be here uh, talking to you about movies. Yeah, man. Happy to have you back. Like I said, you're one of my favorite guests and we, we always have a great time on the show here. Last time we had you here, we were talking the fourth quarter of 2021. We uh, we talked about our Venom 2s and our, our No Time to Dies. Dune, I think, probably got brought up. But, Drew, it's, it's now January. It's now the end of January 2022. What has been your favorite three movies of 2021? If, if there were three movies. It was a strange year. There were three movies. Uh, so I'm going to not say like Spider-Man because I think that's everybody's favorite movie at this point. It's the everybody's talking about it. So I'm not I don't want to talk about it. That's fair. Um, first of all, I want to talk about one of my favorite movies. And I think it just it hit me out of left field. But I love Dev Patel. And it was the Green Knight. For some Ooh. reason, that movie was so good in the theaters. I wanted to see it more than once. Mm. Um, it was absolutely spectacular. The sound the 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 costumes the cinematography everything about that movie just like it hit me in the the good vibe feeling and i just loved it i loved it so much i think um, we might have to switch over to a video podcast because all i'm doing here is like i i have a lot of conflicting feelings about the green knight but everything you're saying like i'm nodding <laughs> with you i'm like yes i wanted to see this again in the theater yes this had the best sound of like any movie i've ever witnessed in a theater Dev Patel, what is he not good in? Okay. Exactly. I wish it was 20 minutes shorter. That, that was my biggest complaint. That was my biggest complaint. Uh, otherwise, it was a fantastic mother loving movie. And, and I, I hope you can expand on that because, like, yeah, again, it was one of those things where the COVID actually helped this movie because the guy's just like, I had a year. I, 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 Travis, yeah. I, was like, I went back in a suit and I just want to let's make the sound as best as it could be. And you're just like, damn, dude, like, expand it's one of those smaller art house movies that you, i don't think you get to see all that often in the movie theaters because there's so much competition and a lot of the theaters won't allow it to have enough screens but for the time it came out it was given enough time enough show times and because i have that a list i was able to go see it i was pretty much the only person in the theaters mm. because nobody else wanted to go out at that time or didn't want to see the green knight and it just was like, I don't know if it was because not a lot was happening or if it was the early rounds of going back to the movie theaters for me. But I was like, this movie looks good. It's probably going to be divisive. Like, I'm either going to love it or I'm going to hate it. And that's exactly what I did with The Lamb, that Lamb movie that came out. I hated that movie. That movie was bad. <laughs> that was a bad art house movie. But The Green Knight was so good. I mean, like you said, Dev Patel, he can't do anything wrong. He acts his butt off alicia vikander is also in the movie spectacular joel edgerton and then you have the green knight who whenever he moves it makes tree noises and it yeah. rumbles through the whole theater and it's oh, it's just so good it's just so good i loved it it was strange to see the amount of hate that it got and people were just like 
people weren't even complaining about the time run like I did. Again, that's that's my only complaint. I feel like people thought they were going to see a movie that was just all the action scenes from The Last Duel. Because they didn't see that, just like, what is this bullshit? Like, I'm, I wasn't familiar with the with the story whatsoever, like, going into it. I was just, like, seeing trailers, like, this looks like a beautiful movie. This looks like something you need to see in the theater. Visually, spectacular. Again, audio-wise, guys, if you don't have the fortune to see this in the theater anymore, and obviously it's not in theaters anymore, like, I, I, I absolutely recommend you invest in a quality sound system for your home. Because, like, this thing... I never thought sound would be so important in a movie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there was movies like, you know, The Sound of Metal, which, again, it was, that was one of those movies. I was like, oh, I wish I saw this in the theater. Like, this movie needs to be appreciated on the biggest screen with the best quality sound system you could possibly buy or spend money on both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I completely agree and your critique on the runtime is my critique of like every single movie that's out there because it Man, feels like no movie can be under two hours everything has to be two hours plus it feels like nowadays and i'm just like no it doesn't it could be 90 minutes heck it could be 80 minutes and they'll be fine with me yeah the the green knight i definitely appreciate that being on your list i'm gonna I'm going to throw out another uh, a movie. Uh, by the way, I, I did my top three uh, just before New Year's, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on these because folks can just go check out Microdose 99 uh, on New Year's Eve. But The Night House fucked me up. Okay. Again, went into that totally blind, not knowing anything about it. It's, it's, there's, there's some spooks, there's some specters, there's a paranormal factor to it, but it's mostly about a woman just dealing with grief. And dealing with finding out that, you know, her husband actually has some strange secrets in, in the afterlife. And what the fuck does it all mean? And like, like, again, that movie just wrecked me. Um, it's one of my, it's, it's, it's in my top three of favorite movies. I, I, I might even have brought it up with you on the last show. Cause I remember it was like, you know, that bitch was in Godzilla vs Kong. And you're like, what? <laughs> So. I'm so happy that you brought up the night house because I feel nobody talks about it. And it frustrates mm. me because like you said, that movie was so good in a way that I had no idea. Like I had an idea of like, cause you watch one trailer, you pretty much watch like half the movie, if mm. any, or if all the movie in some of these trailers, but it's like, we, I watched that movie going like, all right, I'm going to figure out what's going on. And, for this movie to just grip me from the moment it started to the very end. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't predict it. I like I give it all the grades in the world because I couldn't predict what was going to happen next. And I loved it. I loved. And whenever somebody like was looking for a horror movie, I was like, Oh, you should definitely check out the night house. Like whenever you can check it out. I, I hope it comes to like streaming soon because I want more people to see that movie. It's highly underrated. And I was the only person in the theater and I saw it on like opening weekend. And I was very frustrated because once I left that theater, I was like, more people need to see this movie because more of these movies need to be made, not some of the other garbage venoms that are being made. Oof, venom. I mean, it, the night house was a slow burn. It's, it, it doesn't have, you know, things aren't just exploding there. There's no jump scares in it whatsoever. Like it's just all tone and mood and again this this woman is dealing with the loss of her husband who committed suicide in the most peculiar way and then she finds out all these all these just weird facts about him like is is he cheating on her kind of but not really but what the fuck at the same time like i don't want to <laughs> give everything away i again like i said i've been in quarantine for a minute so i revisited ben affleck's the town the other day and she's the love interest in that and i was like what are you doing here oh my god <laughs> like you're you're too good for this movie despite it being an academy award-winning best picture <laughs> but yeah the the night house was it definitely in my top three uh favorite movies of 2021 um yeah man like just uh, more people need to see it I, I would even say go out of your way to just purchase it if not on on physical media, get it on the digital iTunes. Drew, okay. what's your number I mean, two or your second your second fave? All right, so this might be recency bias because because of the show, the box office party, 
I'm trying to get like caught up on all the award buzz movies and try to get mm. everything. So I've been like, I guess Variety came out with like an awards watch list. And I mm-hmm. had only seen one movie on the whole list of like their 10 or 15. And I was like, what? Wow. How am I like this far behind? I only saw King Richard. So I decided I'm going to push through. And so the last few weeks, I've just been watching all these movies going to the theater to see some of them, see them on like HBO max and all that other stuff. So Dude. I watched Coda recently on Apple plus TV mm-hmm. and that Coda was so good. Like I, what is it about? Cause in- I, I, I know that name I've seen, seen the thumbnail on the brother-in-law network, but what is Coda? So Coda is an acronym for child of deaf adults. So it's about a high schooler who is the only person in her family that can hear. So her mom, her dad, and her brother are all deaf. And so they're like in, I want to say like, they're in a official coastal region. And the way that they live, they depend really a lot on her to like help sell the fish once they catch it. Uh, they, she has to be on the boat so that they can go out and listen to all the sirens or the intercom thing. And then she's on top of that trying to be a normal kid, but she has to grow up so fast. And then it's like, are you going to stay with your family or pursue your actual passions in life? And um, it's it's one of those heartwarming movies. I love award movies when they actually have a message and they're original. And I think Coda is that it Coda hits on a level of a movie that just hits me on entertainment wise, heart wise, and hits my funny bone. And it just hits all the points that make me love a movie. And just because it's on the awards watch, I watched it recently recently. So I don't even think it's recency bias. Like I do like with Belfast, I like that movie, but I don't think I would rarely, I think rarely I would, I go rewatch that movie, but Coda, I would watch over and over again. It's like my peanut butter Falcon. For some reason in 2019, (laughs) I loved peanut butter Falcon so much and Coda just reminds me so much. Yeah. I loved it. Hmm. Coda got nominated for a bunch of golden globes and I know the whole ceremony went under everybody's radar. And I I heard uh, box office geeks rant about it the other day. But did it pick up anything at that ceremony? I don't think it did. I I don't think it's going to get any of the awards. I think a lot of the buzz is coming from Power of the Dog. And Dune is going to get like all the technical awards. So that's what I think the main powerhouses are is Dune and Power of the Dog. And then Mm -hmm. some some random movies are going to get some like best supporting actress or anything like that. But I think Coda got best ensemble for the SAG Awards. Don't think it'll win, but it's getting it's getting nods, but I don't think it'll win. Okay. I'm pretty sure I brought this up the last time we talked also, but Zola popped up on my radar again, much like the Nighthouse. I didn't know what it was. Like I'm only hearing this on Facebook buzz in the the Regal and AMC uh, app groups. Where it's like, you gotta see Zola, you gotta see Zola. And I was like, all right, I mean it's a block away, so I'll go check it out. Uh, and and I was like. This movie is amazing. You know, Domingo Coleman was terrifying. The, apparently, it's based on a true story, which I don't know if I 100% believe that. But still, it <laughs> is absolutely an entertaining story. And things go sideways very quickly. Um, again, I, I spoke about all this on the Microdose 99. So I'm not going to not going to go too much deeper into that. But did you check out Zola? I know it's available for free right now with hulu really i didn't know that i i haven't gotten a chance to see zola uh i'm sad to say that because of covid and especially because of um like spider-man and ghostbusters the bigger blockbusters coming out the movie theater i go to it seems like they drop in some of the smaller released movies in one location and then take the other ones to the other location like i just saw eyes of tammy faye via hbo max but i was like dying to see that but the movie theater i go to wasn't seeing it and a movie theater like 40 something miles away Hmm. was the only one that was close enough to see it so um sadly i have not seen that but i have hulu so i'm definitely gonna go check it out i would definitely look up zola zola with a z because that's that's a thing these days it could be with an x but no it's with a z so zola with a z (laughs) um 
it's a perfect amount of time. It's a very small cast. It's a very just compartmentalized story. And I was just like, I, if anything, I was kind of disappointed with the ending, but I also appreciated it. I was like, no, yeah, we need to end this at one hour 40. Let's go. Thank you. You know, I, she's, she made a bunch of tweets about it. So clearly she's okay. It, pff, fantastic story. The Eyes of Tama Faye. I'm glad you finally got to saw that, see that again, much like the Green Knight. I wish it was 20 minutes shorter, but the all of that movie is just Jessica Chastain's performance as Tammy Faye. Like the the makeup is insane, but the makeup with that woman was insane. Like as someone who lived through all that, and I wasn't watching the the, the PTL network or anything, but that woman was pop culture at the time, and so to see see all these things and then to find out it was based on the documentary that rupaul produced you're just like one i want to see that documentary oh you, i can't see it for less than 13 dollars. probably not going to do that right now but this is an amazing movie like yeah i also watched it on the hbo max just recently uh the brother-in-law network i got to see it in the theater like it's when i saw it in the theater and there was some dude seven rows behind me snoring i was just like man you are missing out right now but Drew, what did you think of uh, The Eyes of Tammy Faye? I think that movie is fantastic because of Jessica Chastain alone. Uh, she really commits to the role. She you get you get lost. Like I got lost in her performance. Like I can't right. even tell it's Jessica Chastain, which is great. That's what you want in a movie. Uh, I wish she was the front runner to get the Oscar because I think she deserves it. But um, of course, there's a ton of great performances out there. I just thought that she did a fantastic job from all the movies that I've seen that I feel like she should be pushed to the forefront with it. Um, Andrew Garfield does a great job as well. I thought mm -hmm. he's getting a little bit lost in the mix, but I just watched Tick, Tick, Boom recently and then watching Eyes of Tammy Faye. I just thought he he does a great job. I mean, he really went away for a little while and then came back with Spider-Man and then came back with two great movies. Um, and he's just back on the map. I I. I if you don't have those two actors in that movie, that movie does not work, in my opinion. You want to see more Andrew Garfield in that movie. I disagree with the fact that he went away. I think he got lost in Spider-Man hype, but he's been doing great work since then. Again, just went under everybody's radar because they're like, Andrew Garfield, the bad Spider-Man? Okay, whatever. The whole movie is about the eyes of Tama Faye, so everything's through her point of view. So, like, the biggest controversy of that couple at that time was his affair with Jessica Hahn. And that thing is, it's a footnote. Like it happens. Yeah. There, there's a thing about a phone call. We never even see what Jessica Hahn looks like in this movie. And that's, that's absolutely okay. Because again, this is just what this woman went through. Like she, she was always defied by even by her faith. They're like, yeah, you you were born out of wedlock or whatever, so you can't properly worship in this church. This chick just wanted to worship God. This chick just wanted to be a yeah. good Christian. And when she was finally like at the cream of the crop, at the at the top tier, and you know, um, I forget the gentleman. I want to say it's Pat Robertson. I could totally be absolutely wrong on that guy's name, but he's just like, yeah, we don't like the queers. And we don't like we don't like this and that and the other. She's like, no, but we're all God's children. Like we just need to. Uh, everybody should be loved, you know. Love is love. Love everybody, you know. That's she was always about that message, uh, despite the fact she's like, mm, I also like wearing hundred thousand dollar coats made out of mink, you know. It's she's she's a very very interesting character, and despite the fact that it's on neither of our favorite lists, at least I don't think it is. Um, that that should be brought up. Her biggest competition is going to be Nicole Kidman's Lucille Ball, which should also be 20 minutes shorter. Agreed. I watched B Being the Ricardos, and that movie was much different than what I thought it was going to be. Again, great performances. Javier Bardem is fantastic. Uh, J.K. Simmons, How Can You Get Wrong? And mm -hmm. um, Nicole Kidman. The only thing I, that frustrates me so much about Nicole Kidman is her AMC ad <laughs> that happens in front of every single movie. It's like, I bought yes. the ticket. I'm in the seat. You don't have I'm to here. sell this anymore. Why do I have to watch this 
right before the movie starts. Just hit that play button. I don't need to see this. But yeah, she was fantastic. She really nailed Lucille. And uh, yeah, if one of those two uh, great actresses can win it, I just watched Spencer (laughs) right before doing the show. And uh, Chris Stewart does great. I just, I think if it was more based in reality and what happened in real life than somebody trying to piece together what could have happened Mm -hmm. at that time in life and in Christmas, I think she would be more of the front runner, kind of like how Rami Malek was for Queen, but because that's not it that Mm -hmm. that's we don't know for a hundred percent that's exactly what happened and some people came out saying that he took liberties in a lot of different places that i think we're going to see more of tammy faye who is a real person and like you said was based off the documentary of the same name and then lucille ball who is beloved so i think Mm -hmm. With their at, with their performances and the people that they're portraying and how well mm-hmm. they did with it, I think that's where and the and the realism behind it that's what's going to push them to get the Oscar. Two things. So I haven't been to I've been to an AMC maybe t- three times in 2021. I had the I I still have the A list. In fact, I think I'm honestly considering just canceling my membership to it because it's. It's always been a chore to get downtown for me. It's like, you know, it's a 45 minute bus ride. uh, And then, you know, you see the movie and then you got to get back. And it's it's all a pain in the ass. So now that I have this new Regal, that's a 20 minute walk from me. uh, I'm just like, well, I love that the AMC is playing these movies from Hong Kong and India. And I would like to see more of those. But that Regal is still 20 minutes closer to me. So I'm just gonna gonna focus on that for a while. Um, I first saw the Nicole Kidman ad in Los Angeles, which is a full 300 plus miles away from me on a, on a special gig. I saw last night in Soho. I sat through 28 minutes of trailers. I sat through an ad for AMC. Then the Nicole Kidman ad came up. Then another thing for A list. And then we started our movie tolling out 30 minutes of trailers and commercials before we got to our feature presentation. And I couldn't be more annoyed. Like I, again, through the Facebook ads and all or Facebook groups, I heard everyone complaining about Nicole Kidman's thing. I I watched it on my phone. I was like, well, what's the problem with that? It's a lot. It's a lot after 25 (laughs) minutes of not seeing your movie that you paid money for, or just spent time getting to having said that, um yeah the, the movie theaters your your trailers need to stop knock that bullshit out spencer you and i brought that up on our last episode i was like yo did you know that Kristen stewart's gonna be in a movie about princess die and you're like what and i was like yeah man it comes off like a 1990s bbc tv show and then they got vaseline all on the lens and everything like the movie is just dull and boring and goes absolutely nowhere. Chris Stewart's performance is fine, but that's one of the most disappointing movies I had in 2021. Like, I didn't hate it, but I was just like, this should have been so much better. It felt like a full two episodes of The Crown put together for Netflix. It just felt mm-hmm. like it was so produced. You could understand where the everybody was coming from with this with this script and their ideas but it, like you said it kind of like didn't hit I, they want to do these long takes of like the yeah. scenery and try to make it seem so distant and cold which they did but it just it, it to me it didn't hit as well as it could have mm-hmm. and i just think that's more on the direction and the vision but i thought chris stewart does a great job looking like princess diana and yeah. killing it i mean i thought she did a great job so um yeah, so Spencer Spencer was a huge disappointment, but I could also see that going like the way of Judy, where like no one liked Judy, but everyone agreed that uh, woman. Uh, it wasn't Gwyneth Paltrow, was it? Who played Renee Judy? Zellweger? Renee Zellweger, best actress winner of that year, and it came out of nowhere. But everyone agreed. Like, I still haven't seen the movie, but everyone was like, she was she was the best actress that year. That's, again, 
what I brought up with the best actress between Tammy Faye and um, and Lucille Ball, it's the giving the award to the person that they're portraying rather than the like the acting itself. Like the acting can be fine, yeah, or the performance can be fine, but it's more of like a lifetime award to the person that they are portraying. It's kind of like. To me, I love Bohemian Rhapsody. I saw it multiple times, but oh, no. do I think Rami Malek should have gotten Best Actor? Probably not. I mean, he just <laughs> put in some fake teeth and had a British accent. I don't think he's he's necessarily Freddie Mercury or knocking out of the park, and I'm not going to show everybody, like, this is the best acting I've seen all year. So I yeah. think that's where we come from with Judy Garland, who's done so, many, so much for Hollywood, and then you, you there, I think... Renee does a great job, but I think it's more on the Garland portion, not the actual performance of Renee Zellweger. But I can't even remember who who was even nominated. So good for That's her. That's always for the problem too. Winning. That's always the problem. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut ahead of you. And I'm gonna say my favoriteest movie of 2021, which was a huge surprise to me. I, I'm sure we brought this up on the last episode. We talked about Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, yeah, I, I went in there knowing it was going to have a bunch of Easter eggs, much like 2016's Ghostbusters, and I still hated every single one of those Easter eggs. But I left that movie just going like, I loved this movie. I loved where it went. I loved the family drama. I loved the I loved little girl. I forget what her name is, but oh, like she carried this this 12 year old carried a whole movie on her back. I didn't mind the the tribute to Egon Spangler, Harold Ramis. I was just like that. They did that really tastefully. Like a lot of it's just 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 hidden in shadow and profile. I was like, they did so much right with this. Okay, like this was going to be my this was. I did not want to like this movie whatsoever, and it became my favorite this movie of 2021. What did you like in 2021 the best? Well, I wish I had a. a, a... A backup here because I might I guess I shouldn't have a backup because this is actually my mm-hmm. list but I also have Ghostbusters Afterlife on my list and I was going to bring it up and talk about it because I too wasn't necessarily looking forward to this movie like I was it wasn't one of my most anticipated movies heading into the year I was kind of like excited that it was coming out during Thanksgiving and nothing was really coming out. And I was right. like, I want to go see it in Dolby. I want to see they have those speakers. I want to have the big screen. I want to kick my feet up and I want to just enjoy this movie. And hopefully it's just fun. Like I went in there going like, I hope it's fun at least because yeah. I'm sure yes. it, it, it could be ridiculous and it could be not illogical. But at least if I leave the theater going like that was pretty good. I had a good time with it. I was like, I would count that as a win. And it was so much better what I could have asked for. I mean, it was fantastic. The two leads, the girl and podcast was fantastic. I mean, <laughs> wasn't podcast even like is too not over only the delightful. Top. He's like a little Filipino Dan Aykroyd. I was just like, they, they cast this one so perfectly. Like he's not been in anything before. He might not be in anything afterwards, but like perfect casting. Like, where'd you find this kid? Good for you. Yeah, and a a lot of people were saying like, oh, if these two kids were in anything else, they would be so annoying. But it's like, but they're in Ghostbusters and they absolutely knock it out of the park. Finn Wolfhard, normally he frustrates me outside of Stranger Things, but this time he was actually really, really good. The special effects were incredible. The way they integrated Ghostbusters into the movie without or the ghosts into the movie to then lead into them reforming the Ghostbusters and learning all the technology and bringing in the Ghostbusters, spoiler, bringing in the Ghostbusters. I mean, it just, it worked organically. Like it was Mm -hmm. made with love and care and it wasn't just feeling like a huge cash grab. And also throw in Paul Rudd in there and it's a fantastic film. Like it's just so freaking good. Paul Rudd, again, just he's that guy like what what is he bad in nothing he's always delightful he's always entertaining always charismatic um and and thankfully the movie didn't rest on his shoulders because he's the biggest dude in that graphic like like uh, proportion wise i was like oh no are we gonna just anyway we, we we didn't get that my biggest complaint is not runtime on this one is the actual original ghostbusters 
I love the phone call with Ray Stans. It breaks my heart to say like to hear him say like Egon Spangler can burn in hell. I was like, oh, why? That's that's your boy, dude. Why would you say that? Like uh, he just goes on and on and on. There's a lot of problems with Ghostbusters Afterlife, but I just I left that movie just absolutely delighted and surprised. If anything, I would say it was a better. It was the Ghostbusters 2 we should have had. Forget the original Ghostbusters 2. I would rather call this Ghostbusters 2 since we're in the habit of like, yeah, we have Halloween and we have Halloween 2, but we're going to forget those other other eight sequels and just call this one Halloween also. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just came from Scream and they renamed it requels so it's like in the middle of a reboot sequel where you reboot the series but you keep the first person or the first movie and uh yeah i thought that name works i mean it's really meta but it it works and um yeah i I think that's a huge thing is like it should have this should have been the direct sequel from the original ghostbusters but the thing is is like when ghostbusters 2016 came out that's when everybody was like, my childhood is ruined. You ruined this franchise. And then it's like, guys, it's a movie. You just don't have to watch it. Just watch yeah. the first two and then uh, cut that one off. Don't keep on watching all three of them. But to bring Ghostbusters Afterlife into it and then everybody just seems to really enjoy it is a testament to how much time and care they put into the script and how much everybody was super into this movie and willing to work on it and really want to make it something big and awesome and i just love i it's not a perfect movie but i love it and i love especially the mini marshmallow men that come on that come alive in the walmart that was awesome they're cute they are cute so i can't cute. deny you that so cute wanting to kill each other in the blenders and stuff <laughs> dude we've talked about the past let's get into the future or at least the present it's 2022 it's the first quarter. Uh, if you got something further than that, great. But what are you looking forward to this year, 2022? Okay. I'm glad you said I could go further because I have two movies oh, sure. that are further than Please. the first quarter. <laughs> break it. So break it down. But I am so like I, I went through the list of what is coming out in 2022. And a lot of it is still very speculative. Uh, and, yes. and could also always get moved forward but i i could only go as far as april and i was like yeah we should stop there with fantastic beast three but what, what what you got drew so this is all tentative of course but these are the movies that are supposedly coming out at the time of recording this so i mm-hmm. wanted to be like these are the movies that i'm definitely looking forward to when are, whether they come out now or in the near future, but hopefully they come out still this year because I'm looking forward to all of these movies. I know one especially is coming out. I think two on this list is definitely coming out and that's going to be the Batman coming out all in right. March. That's fair. Yeah, man. It, it looks fantastic. I hate how many trailers I keep seeing for this movie because they have to put every like a trailer in front of every single movie and I'm just like, stop showing me this trailer. I just want to go into it and just enjoy it. That's that 30 minutes of trailers nonsense that all the theaters seem to be doing these days, at least the corporate ones. Well, it's definitely when I go see like, because I like going to the Dolby Theater in my AMC. So when I go to the Dolby Theater, it's the definitely it's like the brand new movies. So if it's Mm. the brand new movies, then it's like, oh, we got to show them everything that's coming out and we're going to go for it kind of thing. It's Mm. like we don't have to see everything, guys. Like we can wait to see everything. I don't need to see that Moonfall trailer for sure. (laughs) <laughs> which isn't even a movie but i hear what you're no. saying that is saying. uh the don't look up when actually people cared and tried to like stop the war of the earth from dying basically hey. oh deep impact deep impact so uh, so <laughs> you're definitely looking forward to the batman i'm also i'm also looking forward to the batman robert pattinson is doing this he got a lot of heat and unfairly because of the twilight films um i have not seen a twilight movie but that also means i probably didn't date anyone during the twilight saga but everyone seems to take that movie or that series really fucking personally and it's just like yo it was it was just a job 
let him do his thing. The guy can act. He he he's done X, Y, and Z since then. Like he's probably not gonna be a bad Batman. Also, these people that cast these movies, they know what they're doing. So he's probably gonna be pretty good in it. I always mock the press releases for these things because you get stuff like, did you know that the Batman logo on the new Batman's chest was made from the gun parts that killed his parents? I was like, well, that's fucking stupid. In fact, we don't even <laughs> need to know that. <laughs> okay, Let's focus on the movie here. Batman should be pretty good. Yeah, I definitely agree. And to piggyback on, uh, on Patterson, uh, Robert Pattinson, I mean, you can't knock a guy for taking a job first of all a job that a will job. give him a paycheck and also give him big exposure to be in movies from when that twilight series ended to now to get batman and to get a major paycheck if you worry about his acting go watch the lighthouse and then go watch good times i mean that those two movies he is spectacular in both those movies I've unfortunately missed both those movies, but I've heard nothing but great things from both those movies. You know, like, let me see here. What else do we got here? Let's see. Uh, Death on the Nile. I want to see Kenneth Branagh's Death on the Nile. It has apparently a lot of controversy because Army Hammer is a quote unquote cannibal. Maybe. I don't know. But. The uh, the murder on the Orient Express was delightful. It was one of the first. It was actually the first movie I got to see with Movie Pass, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more more out of this series if they make more. But this thing looks tainted. Yeah, I keep on seeing the trailer for it. I'm probably gonna go see it because it's a movie, and I have to watch everything in 2022 at this point. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't a huge fan of Murder on the Ordi Orient Express. I think I saw it at home when I watched it, and it just completely lost me. I guess if I saw it in theaters, I would have been able to, like, really concentrate. But I just remember, from what I remember of that movie, I was just like, wow, this movie is not my favorite. And I checked <laughs> out halfway through it. So I'm hoping Death on the Nile will be better. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it has a great, it has a great cast, except for Russell Brand. Um, but everybody else looks great in it. Is Russell Brand in it? Now I want to see it more. Like I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> the trailers I've seen are making you understand that Gal Gadot is the star of this movie, or Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot is the star of this movie, and she's probably not. She's probably in less of this movie than she is in the trailer. Yeah, isn't she the one that's looking to be killed? Or she called Kenneth Branagh to help not to, to help stay alive because she can't trust anybody at the party. So I feel like hmm. she could be gone first or second, whoever, how many people they're going to murder on the Nile or how many people are going to die. So Agatha Christie is only second to Alfred Hitchcock franchises. So in both of those cases, I'm I'm, I'm pretty unfamiliar with. So I, I don't know. Don't know what to expect from Death on the Nile in this case. Like One of the movies that okay. I do have on this list, and it's a guilty pleasure because I did not like the first one that came out uh, in 2020, but this new trailer came out. It got me all excited. Whenever I see the trailer, I get a big smile on my face, and for some reason, I just want to keep... I, I can't wait to see it in uh, April, which is Sonic... The Hedgehog 2. Um, it's got okay. tails. It's got knuckles. Jim Carrey is back with a really weird mustache. And for some reason, my whole critique on the first one was, this doesn't feel like the game. It just felt like they just plopped Sonic in there and was just trying to make him fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. Now, it feels like the game because we have tails. We have knuckles here. And you got the video game noises. And it just feels... It just feels real now, and I just can't wait. I can't wait to see this movie. Sonic the Hedgehog, when it came out, it should have it should have just fallen into that category of video game movies that are not good. However, everybody that watched this loved this. And I did a... There was a series before this, Drew, called The Cushay Show, where we just took 
junket interviews and we mix it into uh, into an episode and we did what we did Sonic the Hedgehog was one of those we still didn't see it I don't regret it the only thing that made me interested in Sonic 2 was Idris Elba playing Knuckles yeah um my experience with Sonic is goes as far as Sonic the Hedgehog 2 maybe Sonic Pinball okay there's no Knuckles I barely know what Tails is because of Sonic 2, but I was just like, if I'm going to see a Sonic movie, it's probably going to be with this movie here. Trailer is decent. The movie made a lot of money, so it was only it was only natural they were going to make a Sonic 2 out of it. And, you know, if I'm going to see a movie, I'm probably going to see this one. I feel like it's been polished a little more, much like Venom 2, which I still hated. But I was like, yo, it's 89 minutes and it's 20 minutes away from me. That's that's where we're going. I'm going to be home before 8 o'clock. Outstanding. How do you think it's going to compare to Uncharted, the movie? I think uh, another video game movie. Uh, yep, yep, yep. The good thing that has Uncharted is that it's more of a, like an Indiana Jones. So yes. more people would probably want to go see it when that's being said about it. And then Tom Holland just had this big Spider-Man movie. So there's a lot going for it. Okay. Any any expectation for it? Or are you just like, well, Mark Wahlberg's in it. That's probably not going to work. It should be Nathan Fillion. Well, I'm cool with Mark Wahlberg uh, in it. So the only thing that gets me is like, I didn't play the Uncharted. And I just know that everybody was saying that it was like a ripoff of indiana jones and the most recent indiana jones wasn't good so i'm just Mm. like i'll sit and i'll wait i mean i'm gonna go see it in theaters because i have the stubs uh i have a list and and i don't think anything's gonna be coming out near it so when it comes out i'm just gonna be like cool i'll watch it but i'm not expecting any like groundbreaking exciting stuff that i haven't seen from other adventure movies i feel like it's just gonna be a wash rinse repeat with spider-man slash mark Wahlberg in it Big. yeah your uncharted comes out uh the week after valentine's day so when they said they were making a movie and tom holland was finally in it and all that and i was like mm, it's probably gonna be okay but nothing it's, it's not for me it's not for 43 year old kush Hayes, you know it's yeah i'm not looking forward to it i mean it's going to be a movie and it's probably going to make like over a hundred million, probably maybe 150 million. But to me, I'm just like, not, uh, I got Indiana Jones. I could watch. Uh, I just, unless it comes out with something revolutionary, I'm just like, okay, cool. Whatever. There you go. That makes sense. What's uh, what's, what's the top movie you're looking forward to in 2022, if not the first quarter. All right. So I just want to give a special, just a little, throw out there that i don't know if it's coming out and i have no idea what it could be about but nope is coming out the okay. third jordan peele directed movie i loved us i love get out whatever he does i will be sitting my butt in the theater watching it at least once uh, but i have no idea what nope is i don't care what it's about i'm gonna be seeing it no matter what i don't care who's in it i don't care anything about it i'm just gonna go watch it um but my number one most anticipated movie of this year is Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse part one. I'm a huge Spider-Verse fan. It was so good. Um, I saw it. Yeah. Twice in theaters. It was fantastic. I've listened to the soundtrack multiple times. I've seen the movie countless times. I bought the steel book at Best Buy when you could buy steel books at Best Buy rather easily. Um, And now the new trailer popped out and I'm just like, I can't wait. Like it's coming out end of the year, I think closer to September, October. Um, So I really, really hope that it does come out. It stays in that time zone and I will see it at least once in theaters for sure. And yeah, that's my most anticipated movie. I can't wait. That's a sequel to uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated movie with Miles Morales. Correct, it is. And it looks like it's going to be at least a trilogy because 
the full title of this one is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. So I'm mm. guessing that they're going to be making a Part 2, and it'll come out either the following year or in 2024. Whenever it comes out, I will be seeing that one as well. But hopefully it's just as good, if not better, than Into the Spider-Verse, uh, which is going to be a hard thing to hit because it was hard. such a huge, great... It was a, such a great film, and I think that... Um, but I, I have full trust in everybody that's on this project. And I think it's going to be really, really good. I've seen the trailer and I was just like, this looks less than what we had with Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I, the, I, I appreciate the age of them a little more. But at the same time, it's just like, hmm, this, this. I remember seeing that first trailer where he, he, he shoots off the off the building and the glass breaks and all that. I was like, yeah, this is going to be it. Uh, did I think it was going to win an Academy Award? Nope, but it still did. It's feels like they're trying to do just more multiverse stuff. Why, why do we need that? Well, first of all, I don't know what's going on with Marvel. I saw the Eternals. That was the stinker. I saw Black Widow. Not that great. Uh, Loki was somewhat fun <sighs> to me. We're getting to the point where I'm getting super fatigued by Marvel. Okay. And there's only so much you can go far into this multiverse before I think it gets too convoluted, too complex. And then I'm kind of checking out at some points. And I feel like if I start checking out of movies and they just completely lose me, I don't know if I can come back like for, say, like the next Spider-Man, which comes out where 15 movies are in between it and will I be able to like be able to jump in and out without like thinking that I have to uh, watch 15 TV shows on Disney plus 12 movies and right. have to know all the different multiverses. Cause we have that um, WandaVision goes directly into Dr. Strange two. That's coming out later this year, which is mm -hmm. also dealing with multiverse stuff, which was dealt with Loki where they introduced a new bad guy. And I'm just like, if I didn't watch this stuff, would I be completely lost? And I'm almost at that point where I watch Eternals going like, I wasn't excited for this movie and watching two, almost two and a half hours. Wait, it was two and a half hours. Uh, watching two and a half mm -hmm. hours of it. I was like, this movie sucks. And <laughs> if I don't want to watch a movie, a Marvel movie, I'm just not going to do it because I feel like my intuition is correct in that aspect. And if I if that one's pivotal for me to have to watch all the other Spider-Mans or whatever, then sayonara. I'm not going to watch all these. Box Office Party is the name of the show. They come out Wednesdays on all the major streaming platforms at Box Office Party. You can find that on Twitter at box.office.party is where you're going to find that on Instagram. Drew's Reviews. You're going to find that there with Box Office Geek and Hamcock. Is there anything you want to add, sir? Uh, no. If you're interested in hearing three guys talk about the box office, box office earnings, predictions, movie reviews, I would greatly be thankful if you guys checked out uh, the show, left a review, or uh, just checked it out. I mean, it would be great. But uh, it's really, really fun. We're having a good time. It's three of us just talking about movies from week to week and uh, having a good time playing games. And just talking. I mean, it's just nice to talk about new movies, box office news, and kind of like connecting with other people through the art of movies like we're doing today. There you go. Otherwise, folks, check out Waffle Box Podcast. You can find that on the Bosnet.family. Otherwise, it's on YouTube, wafflebox.podcast. This is the best part of Wednesdays. You can always check that out. Otherwise, for, for Drew Angelman, I've been Kush Hayes. You've been you. Micro dose, 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 yeah, micro dose.
from the Bosnet family. It's like I bought yes. the ticket. I'm in the seat. You don't have I'm to here. sell this anymore. Why do I have to watch this?